Hi, I'm Heather Dorf, indie actress, and you're watching The 13th Wolfman. Stay bloody. Hey everyone, you know who I am. I'm the 13th Wolfman. You know what? I have Heather Dorf with me. She's been in tons of independent, independent stuff, including Truth or Dare, which yes. we'll probably talk a little bit about. Welcome to Sit Down, Heather. Thank you for having me, Thomas. I appreciate it. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's great. Um, I just got, like we were talking earlier, I just got done watching a few minutes, uh, not too long ago, one of your first films. Right. What people, well, what they say. It's almost like what people say and <laughs> what they say. And uh, I love this movie. I love the story. I, I love the message it sends mm -hmm. that some things you don't want to be inherited can. Right. You know? Well, there's definitely, um, you know, but behind uh, what they say, there's definitely a lot of layers to it. I mean, it speaks a little bit about society, too, in a whole. I mean, it's supposed to kind of point out how... Um, you know, sometimes having the best intentions, your family, your friends, or whoever it may be, um, doesn't necessarily come off that way, like through, you know, social pressure, or pressure to be perfect, or look perfect, or make good grades can kind of drive you to insanity. And I think it does for a lot of us. Um, we're trying so hard sometimes to make other people happy that we can't find ways uh, to be happy, to actually be happy to do what we want to do. So yeah, there's a lot of different, a lot of different layers. So as I was saying, uh, yeah, it just it it just had a really great, interesting idea of you know the things you don't want to have inherited in, in your life, right? You know, and I thought it was a strong movie. I thought I really thought that it needed to be expanded upon. You know, I mean, you said it's sixteen minutes, and it I could see it as a hour twenty, hour twenty, hour and thirty minute movie. You know, I think right. there's enough enough there for it. I think so, too. I, I really, really do. It was always something I kind of like mold over a little bit because it was received fairly well, especially to be such a low budget project and to be kind of one of many of us um, that were involved first project, my one of my first acting projects and stuff. Um, it's just, you know, what boils down to is just like I, I think I said this earlier, finding the money and, and you know, writing that script out and really getting a good idea and, and making a really strong script and having a really strong crew to bring it to life. So who knows? Maybe. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to see it. So was this filmed in your hometown or was this filmed in L.A.? It was actually filmed in Chicago. Um, Chicago is kind of where I um, started my, you know, acting career. I was there for years. I took all my coaching and classes there. Um, and it's just really where I started getting my footing. I actually am new to L.A. I've only been here for about a year. So. Oh, okay. Right. Well, within that year, you've managed to make a, a feature with with another alum from Sit Down, Jessica. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Truth or Dare. Truth or Dare. Very much well. So I'm pretty excited. I mean, I've seen it, obviously. You know, it had its uh, film festival and convention tour, and now they're just in talks for distribution, and I hope that happens soon because I know a lot of people are excited to see it, and I'm excited for people to see it. <laughs> um, but it was a great project, and it did actually film outside of L.A., um, and it was just awesome. It's a really good time. So <laughs> how'd you two meet up? So that's actually funny. We actually met on a film set. Um, I'd say not quite a year prior to when we uh, started shooting uh, Truth or Dare, maybe like six months before um, the set was I mean, the movie was called uh, Intrusive Behavior, and it was actually shot in Florida. And uh, Brian Troxell was uh, the director and he, he's awesome. But uh, yeah, he just randomly, you know, brought me up. Uh, to be in his film he had found me somehow through the interwebs and you know uh, wanted me to be involved and I was super happy to do so and it was kind of funny because I was really nervous about meeting Jess initially because um you know women <laughs> I've always been sort of more boyish than girlish um so uh -huh. I don't always connect with girls in the same way even when I was a little girl 
girls would talk about like you know barbies and i would talk about the latest like mortal Kombat game it just didn't work <laughs> so um i was really nervous to meet her because i you know i always want girls to like me like but i feel like i'm very awkward uh with girls so they were always kind of uh you know skittish with me but jess was you know from the moment we met we realized uh we're a lot alike in a lot of ways we've been through similar hardships in our life and we just really connected um and it ended up being a really fun set. Um, it was kind of funny, though, because <laughs> on top of just having to work together and not knowing each other in our first time meeting, we actually had to share a room and share a bed. So it's like if we didn't like each other, this was going to get awkward real fast. <laughs> but we did. So all is well. And, you know, that weekend, actually, while we were filming, she mentioned to me that she was writing this script and I should be involved and da 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 da. And I, you know, I was like, yeah, sure. For, you know, I'd love to see it. Let me know. You know, thinking all the while that, like, a lot of people say that they're writing a script, they're doing a movie, and then they actually, you know, it never happens or it takes years and years and years. And then three months later, she's like, so I have the script and we're going into pre production. <laughs> Look, check it out, see if you want to be involved. And it was truth or dare. So, yeah, she's on it. That girl is on a mission. Oh, and she's yeah she's great <laughs> she really is I, i've had her on sit down twice and i've met her once in person last year at crypticon or this year at crypticon so I've, I've had the pleasure of, of talking to her and brian troxel has been on sit down has he oh that's awesome i actually yeah. i have not spoken to brian i've reached out to him a few times um just to say hi and stuff just haven't heard back from him. He's a great filmmaker. I mean, I really enjoyed being on his set and intrusive behavior is super I mean, it's great. I like it. Um yeah, you sent I think me it's, that. Yeah, it's just a very I, I actually have a copy of that. Have you seen it or no? Not yet? I haven't watched it yet, but but yeah, I do have a copy. It's sitting right over on the banister. You've got to see it because it's me and Jess. If I'd have I known, I'd been like, yeah. watch that. <laughs> even over what they say, because it's me and Jess together, and it's the first film we ever did together. So it's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Now, I read something about you, and I want to know what the outcome was. Okay. Okay? I'm scared. <laughs> Don't be scared. But no, th this, this is something to do with a fear of yours already. Okay. So you know what I'm getting at. I think so. I right. hope so. So you have a natural fear of heights. I do. I have an extreme fear of heights. Yes, still. <laughs> and, and to combat this fear of heights, you did something that I don't know if anyone else would do. You got in a plane. You, you'd never been on a plane in your entire life. So the first plane you get on, you plan to jump out of? <laughs> <laughs> It sounds so crazy when people say it to me, and it's crazy that I've done it. And I'm so glad I have video. Otherwise, I don't think I could prove to anyone that I actually did do it, but I did. Yeah, and you know what's funny is I was 20, and I had never been on a plane. I avoided it at all costs because, I mean, I am so scared of heights. I climb up, you know, three rings on a ladder, and I get vertigo. Like, I start shaking. I mean, it's that bad. I am just terrified of heights. And what ended up happening was the person I was dating at the time, his group of friends, like for this our friend's birthday, they were all going to do like a group package skydiving thing because you could get a discount if you all go together. And everyone was doing it. My boyfriend was doing it. Everyone was doing it. And I am very, very competitive, and I hate being the only one to chicken out of doing things. And even though I was terrified, I agreed to it and then like paid for it and figured if I pay for it, I can't back out. And I am not even kidding. Like, I researched so much into it. Actually, I don't even know if it was a good thing because it terrified me even more. Like, on the Q&A of the, of the site, like, where we were skydiving. For one, it was one of the highest – it is one of the highest tandem, like, skydives in the United States. It's uh, uh, 14,500 feet. So it's a full minute of free fall, which is that, pretty that's long. Like, that's, <laughs> like, a little bit over 100 feet taller than Mount Rainier, which is yeah. in my state. Yeah. <laughs> it's really high. It's one of the highest here. Um and like I said, it's a minute of free fall. So that in itself is terrifying. But on the Q&A, it was like, you know, one of the questions was, what do you do if your parachute fails? What happens if your parachute fails? And then it explains how it, you have a backup parachute. And then it's like, well, what if your backup parachute fails? And the answer was, you're about to have a bad day. <laughs> Oh and God. I was just like terrified. I don't know. And, and, you know, we get there and actually the first time we came, they ended up having to cancel because it was too windy. So we had to come back for this thing at a later time. And it, it just, it was so bad. I was practically crying. I mean, you can tell in the video that I'm pretty much crying in the plane because 
I'm terrified. The plane was awful. It was like not compressed. So it was like very, I don't know. It was just terrifying. Um, and then the guys were picking on me saying how like something looked loose or my harness looked old or whatever. And I'm like, please stop. You guys don't understand how scared I am. And when we were going to jump, the guy was like, okay, I'm the count of three. And I'm like, all right. And he goes, one. I'm like, one. And he's two. And then he jumped out without yeah. even saying three. And he backflipped us out of the plane. But it was honestly the second I was out of that plane, it was like a whole different experience. It was awesome. Um, it's, it's something I don't know if I'd ever do it again. Not so much because it's just like how many times do you want to tempt fate, <laughs> you know, in death? <laughs> kind of thing. I don't know if it's such a good idea. But it was super, super um I don't know, freeing, um, wasn't nearly as scary. The plane ride was so much worse, I think, and still think planes are worse than jumping out of them. Out of the plane, you're fine. In the plane sucks. <laughs> so here's the question. And I got a feeling I already know the answer. Did it cure you of your fear of heights? It did not. It did yeah. not. It didn't. <laughs> um, it helped somewhat. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's very hard to cure a fear of. It's not even so much that I'm scared of the height. I'm scared of falling and hurting myself. And when you grow up as clumsy as I've been my whole life or as bad luck prone, you just can't help thinking that all things are going to turn out awful and you're going to end up splat on the floor. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it didn't cure it, but it definitely, I think, helped. And, and as I started traveling more and being on planes more, um, I learned to accept it and kind of deal with it. But every time there's, like, rough turbulence on a plane, I swear to God, I, like, lose my – I'm, like, holding on to the <laughs> seats and praying. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you've traveled to quite a few cons this year. I mean, right. I've seen some, I've seen some pretty cool makeup that you've donned at some of these cons. Right, right, right. We did um, yeah. Comic Con and Walker Stalker Fest and Horror Hound, um, and I always do, um, I always do makeup when I go to these things because it's fun. It's like you know, it's the one time you know, aside from Halloween, obviously, it's the one time you can you know dress up in costume and and, and do special effects makeup, and people don't think you're you know gonna murder everyone. So. <laughs> or that you're crazy or whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah, I do my own makeup. I do different things, but mostly I stick around Day of the Dead and like a Two-Face theme. I, I was going to say, I think it was Horror Hound that you did the half sugar skull. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. looked really great. Awesome. You did that all yourself? I did, actually. And it, to be... Uh, I did that too in under an hour because Jess was rushing me and we were late <laughs> and she's like, hurry up. And I'm like, do you know how long it takes to do this? Because, you know, not only are you doing half candy skull, but then you have to do half of your own makeup as well. Like, so it's like twice the time to do. And I just had to rush and do it. Um, I do want to get more elaborate with the candy skull stuff right now. I just kind of stick to a like red, black, uh, green theme. And I almost want to like find makeup to make it even more colorful and crazy, but it's just, it's just going to be something I have to practice and do, but I'm sure be yeah <laughs> it'll be fun it looks great i mean it really does. i i when i was younger i wanted to be a special effects artist but i found out i had no talent in drawing or sculpting <laughs> so so when i see people that that can sit in the sit and look in the mirror and do that it just you know brings out the awe in me i'm like wow <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know what's funny is I can't draw at all, but what I can do is I can mimic very well. Like if I see something, I can kind of recreate it, even if it's drawing, painting, whatever it is, as long as it's not super intricate, you know, I can't like, you know, redo some like massive painting. But when it comes to like, you know, simpler things like the candy skull stuff and painting and stuff, I, I really, and I even used to draw like anime characters, like I'd find sheets and then draw my own versions of them and they'd look pretty exact. Um... But yeah, uh, yeah, I really love it. It's it's not something I practice or do often. I feel like I should because I'd probably get good at it. But gosh, I don't have time. <laughs> where do you get but the crazy lenses at? Oh, um, where do I get mine? Um, I get mine from some normal site, big site, because I have to get prescription so I can see because without glasses or contacts, I'm blind. Uh, so I have to get prescription ones. But honestly, um, there's like three main sites, like contactlenses.com and, and another one that all sell them. They all sell them. You just have to look up Halloween contacts and prescription or non-prescription. There's more options, actually, if you don't need prescription. Uh, but plenty of sites sell them. And I mean big, big sites. So, you know, yeah. Okay, I've been wanting to do something, you know. I mean, I am the 13th Wolfman. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. I actually have wolf contacts that are really cool that you would probably really like. <laughs> <laughs> And 
Of course, I mean, you're traveling with Jess. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't sleep, right? No. I mean, no, really. <laughs> I'm like, I could be, I'm not kidding. No, no, she does not sleep. And and then she expects me not to sleep along with her. And I keep telling her, I am human. You are a bionic woman. And this is not how this works. So no, I mean, like, I will go to bed and I'll hear her clicking away. Like, I mean, after like, you know, I'll have like a 14, 16 hour day, like promoting or running around or a festival or whatever we may do be doing, uh, travel, whatever it may be. And I am just like beat to the point of like, I can't even move anymore. And I like, pass out on the bed and I could just you know sometimes I'll even wake up like a couple hours later and she'll still be up and then like when I wake up in the morning she's already up I'm like when do you sleep woman and how do you exist I don't I don't know how she lives like that I can't do it she, she has <laughs> joked and she and I I don't know if it's a joke or not but she has jokingly said that you know she only lives off of like three hours of sleep honestly I mean, I, I don't think she's kidding. <laughs> I think mostly she sleeps between three to five hours a night. Like, that's to be expected. Um, I don't know. I worry sometimes. I don't think that's healthy. She's okay. Like, she doesn't seem run down or anything, but I don't know. Can't be good and, for you. <laughs> and then she brought up something on one of the last shows she was on with us about your alter ego. What <laughs> alter ego? God had mercy. What alter ego? <laughs> Drunk dwarf. dwarf. Oh, no. <laughs> damn her. Damn her. She's made, she's made this a thing. This was not a thing. Like, four months ago, this did not exist. I don't even know when this started, but all of a sudden I realized at some point, I didn't even know about it initially. Like, this went on for weeks before I figured out, like, saw on her Twitter and stuff that she, like, drunk dwarf hashtag and had, like, memes and and vines and all kinds of stuff and i'm like i am going to kill you um yeah so i'm very introverted and i'm also very shy in real life so it's very hard you know i'm t my way of being shy though is i tend to be very talkative like i'll just talk to people but it's kind of almost shy. huh it is I'm shy though because it's manic and the whole time i'm thinking i wonder if what i'm saying is weird and it's just like I'm so uncomfortable. It takes me a little time uh, to get to know people and to really open up and to feel comfortable and not, you know, super nervous. So I am very shy. Even though I will approach people, I will talk to people. It's nerve wracking. It makes me very an anxious. Um, but when I drink and I'm also, you know, I think about things. I worry about things. I'm, you know, a little bit calculated. I try not to, you know, I don't know. I don't know. So, you know, when I drink... <laughs> I just lose all inhibitions and all worries and all nervousness and all anxiousness. And what ends up happening is I am just a little bit wild, not like in a bad way, not anything. No, that no. And, and she didn't say anything bad about it. She just, you know, it, she just said that you guys have fun when you guys go out drinking, you know? Absolutely. I really think she would prefer if she could get me to act all the time, how I do when I'm drunk, she would prefer that much more. <laughs> so. about that. No, 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 because she just thinks I'm more fun and open and, you know, willing to take risks and stuff like that. Um, you know, I, I'm not like slurring and all over the floor, thank God. Although, you know, that has happened a few times in my life as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I try to avoid that mostly. <laughs> but that, yeah. That, that's not drunk dwarf. That's super drunk dwarf. <laughs> yes. Drunk dwarf. Passed out dwarf. <laughs> I try not to go there as often as possible. But yeah. Yeah. It's fun. Jess is fun. So she's a blast. She I, is. I can't say enough good things about her. I, I really do feel like she's like a really good friend, even though I only really talked to her like this twice right. and then once in person, you know? Right. But honestly, that's how she is. It's very, you know, it's very easy to, uh, you know, love Jess. She's just, she's very open. She's very blunt. Um, and some people like that and some people don't. I'm very blunt, but I'm more carefully blunt <laughs> than Jess. But it's refreshing to be around someone that you know isn't going to like sugarcoat things all the time or, you know, kind of bullcrap you is going to be, you know, honest about herself and honest about her opinions, even if you do or don't agree with them. Um, it's just, like I said, it's very refreshing. So, yeah. So along with doing stuff with Jess, what do you got? What do you, what do you got in your, uh, you know, in Arsenal, your what's next? Yeah, so what's there's, next? A, there's a couple of things me and Jess are talking about doing or she's going to have me involved in, but nothing is solidified um, quite yet. Uh, so I can't really talk about any of it. The, the biggest thing is, you know, I came out to L.A. It will be a year in January. Um, 
and it took me time to kind of get my life here together and, you know, like figure out a, a pace and, um, and also just figure out LA. I still get lost to be perfectly honest. I still have no clue where I am. And we've been here almost a year. The city is huge. Um, but I really, uh, plan to start really aggressively, you know, doing the acting thing. It's a little intimidating though, to be honest, because in Chicago, um, the community was so much more, uh, so much smaller. Um, it was very easy and very quickly, you know, I was able to kind of integrate myself there and know everyone and everyone knew me. And then, you know, you leave that, that comfort zone of where, you know, people know you and trust you and hire you based on merit and who, you know, and, and that they know you through someone else. And you come to the city where everyone's an actor and everyone's been like, you know, training for 10, 15 years and they've done hundreds of different projects, thousands of different projects. And it's just, you know, it's really intimidating. So I think I kind of let that get, get, get me for a little while. Um, uh, make me shy away from like auditioning and stuff. Uh, so I'm basically, I'm saying I must stop doing that. <laughs> I'm going to start actually, you know, actively getting my little tush out there, uh, because this is what I love to do. Um, although I take it very seriously, it's also very fun for me. It's very rewarding. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a struggle. Being an indie artist is always a struggle. You have to hustle and work really, really, I mean, extra hard for it, but it, in my mind, it, it really is worth it. And, yeah, there really isn't anything I could see myself doing besides this. So that's great. I'm uh, I'm always looking forward to stuff that you know the people that come on here are, are willing to put out. You know, it's like every I just I still love to support the indie actors, the indie filmmakers. You know, right, right. Yeah, it's important because they really have are... something coming out. Do what now? When you do have something coming out, just make sure you tell us about it. You know. Oh, absolutely. I definitely will, for sure. That's great. I I want to I, I want to see you like you and Jess and you know all the other indie artists just explode, you know? I want everyone to know who all you guys are. Right. It would be cool. You know, even even if, you know, not on this like a lister level but it'd be so cool to just be able to consistently make you know quality movies to have people trust us and you know allow us to kind of take the rein and 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 do our projects and and work with the people we know are out there and that are not being seen um and just kind of crank them out it'd be great and hopefully we'll get there i mean if anyone will it'll definitely be jess because that girl ain't gonna stop until she gets there <laughs> so i believe in her if no one else <laughs> well i like to quote you, she is the self promotion queen. Yeah. You know, she 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 really knows how to get her name out there. She does. She does. I mean, and you know, as she says, it's just <laughs> you can't sleep. <laughs> but beyond that, it's just never stopping. You know, from the moment she wakes up to the moment she goes to sleep, she's constantly out looking, working, you know, um, because this is what she wants to do and in a way it kind of takes that kind of dedication and determination uh to get it done. So and sounds like you're you're gearing up for that same kind of dedication, you know, for your career. So I am. We'll see you. I know we're gonna see you in like a ton of stuff. <laughs> I hope so. Who knows though? At the very least you'll see me in a ton of stuff with Jess, because that girl drags me everywhere, even if I'm kicking and screaming about it. <laughs> so <laughs> well, that works too. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to promote? Anything you want to plug? Um, I think uh, the biggest things is obviously keep a lookout for Truth or Dare because that is definitely you know that should be the next one that kind of comes out for distribution. Um, one that was recently self distributed and is available on Amazon is called Spades and it's by John Wesley Norton um, and it's a crime psychological thriller drama thing. It's very different from most of the th the work I've done and I do have a small role in it, but it's amazing. Um, it's a really good film and it has kind of a you know, eclectic like ensemble cast, and it, it's it's fun. It's it's a really good film. So there's that, and obviously we mentioned it, but intrusive behavior for those of you that you know are fans of me, but especially are fans of me and Jessica Cameron together. Uh, that's just another film to see that we both happen to be in, and one of the first films that we ever did together. So there's that, <laughs> and that is available for purchase as well. So, and if people want to follow you and find you, where can they do it on the internet? 
So my website is, you can find so much of my work, what, whether, what's available for free and different like shows and stuff I've done on hosting and stuff. And that is heatherdorf.com. And then obviously on the Twitter, uh, it's at Serenity Rising. And on Facebook, it's just actress Heather Dorf or Heather Dorf. Give me a search. You'll find me. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for coming on. I, I really enjoyed, you know, talking to you. You're welcome back anytime. For sure. Maybe next time we can do one with me and Jess together because that's hey, always fun. <laughs> I would love that, you know. Be super cool. And thank you and, again so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, I, I'm just glad we finally got the, the times all down and, you know, you, the confirmation and whatnot, you know. <laughs> for sure. For sure. <laughs> for that and for Heather Dorf, I am the 13th Wolf Madden. I'm on the prowl.